Danmarks stemmer. Sådan. Jeg har sat en alarm til klokken 18.43. Hey Google, sluk nu så. Hey Google, find mig en danser. Tak, sag 1, 2, 3, punktum, endnu. Værsgo. Hey Google, skal du stille pizza i aften? Her får du nogle opskrifter. Hey Google, start stå. Google. Kan du finde mig en kæreste? Jeg kan introducere dig til min gode ven, mikrobølgeovnen. Jeg ved dog ikke helt, om det er din type. Do you think a machine can help the brain? Machine can definitely help the brain, yeah. Uh, I mean, machines have been helping brains all along. Our capacity for learning is very limited, as well as our capacity to memorize. And we've been offloading a lot of our brain capacity into cell phones and other machine-enabled tools for a long time now. Tools to help with the brain go as far as back as the first calculator, or like the Chinese calculator, where you just like put um, different dots on and off. And nowadays, I mean, it's it has been kind of been proven there's a lot of studies have found that people who use cell phones a lot actually have neurological changes in the brain because they can offload a lot of the functions that are not optimized for brains and they're using phones and other tools so humans are great i mean human brains are great at pattern recognition and uh, some people are becoming better at it because we don't have to do rote memorization or i or aesthetic uh, memorization per se. Ooh, sounds scary, huh? Mm, yeah. No, actually, <laughs> it's actually great because uh, then we can focus on the things that we do best. We don't have to memorize all the things anymore because we can just look it up and we can do things. We can optimize our tasks for the things that we do best, which is creative, uh, which is creative thinking, critical thinking, pattern recognition, etc. We're better than computers in that. And why don't we optimize? Okay, for from AI perspective, how would you attempt to define consciousness? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, that's a that's a rabbit hole. I would try not to define it. Um, it's possible. It's um. I mean, there's a lot of theories about it. It's not something that we would readily like to define per se because some people say that we'll know it when we get there other people say that it's unique to humans and we can't um consciousness have a variety of aspects such as self-recognition and self-regulation which computer algorithm do to a certain degree it's just that people have been saying consciousness is one thing when the technology at the time was over here and when the technology catches up people say that that is not consciousness anymore and then they set up a higher bar so historically it's been a constantly catching up game where people has been elevating the definition of consciousness as soon as technology follows up to the level of consciousness that they defined previously. So whatever term you define, when technology gets there, we'll say it isn't. Okay, what inspired you to go to AI? Um, I mean, I personally like mathematics and then um in all in the field of mathematics ai is actually where i mean so i personally love studying applied mathematics and ai and machine learning is the area where a lot of frontier applied mathematics is currently being developed and being used and i also love thinking about higher dimensional um spaces that just kind of like goes back to the time when i really loved physics and there's nothing like artificial intelligence that can really compute higher dimensional uh, what we call data frames or data structures or spaces etc cetera, etc cetera, because the human brain has evolved in is a creation of evolution and we have evolved in a three-dimensional space plus one dimension of time and we our brain can't quite comprehend more than that well for computers it doesn't matter if it's a single dimension or three dimension mm -hmm or 11 dimensions or more. For it, it's the same thing. It's just that there's a lot of mathematical theories that only work when you are in higher dimensions. And while I was trying to go into that, I kind of fell down the AI hole, shall we say. What is it that uh, you would like to see most arise from the work in AI? There is so much work to be done in the field of AI. At the same time, there's also so much to be done in applying AI technology that already exists the potential of AI is not necessarily the potential we haven't harnessed yet in development of algorithms, but the pure fact that people are averse 
in trying to adapt the technology into their own lives. We do not like being dictated by algorithms. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a person who doesn't necessarily believe in free will. Um, I believe in free choice. Um, which are... found, yeah, I found somebody <laughs> who... <laughs> yeah. those, those are two different concepts. A free will is assumes a sort of supreme consciousness and an, and an almost omnidirectional infinite intelligence, which humans do not possess. What we have is free choice, where in a limited amount of choices and limited amount of information in a very tight time constraint, we are allowed to make choices that are imperfect. And AIs can help us make more informed choices. And I'm a person who embraces integrating AI into my life and making my life better so that I can focus my mental energy into choices that to me matter the most. But a lot of people are not willing to do that. A lot of people would like to make free choices in every aspect of the life, but by choosing to do so, they're losing a lot of opportunity in making better choices in a grander scheme of life. At least that's my perspective. So. Not necessarily a particular technology that I would like to see arise from AI, but I would like to see a society that embraces AI more in everyday aspects of their life. Okay, so it's a kind of a changing mental framework or the way we think. Yes, you know, I mean, yeah, so, yeah. I mean Uber framework. is one company that has really integrated AI into this business, uh, into this business plan where the algorithm will find drivers and riders and mash them up and you automatically get quotations and how much this will cost um and then mm -hmm. it like there's a lot of estimations and matching programs and riders uh, and drivers can are also allocated different pathways depending on if their home is here and if their cutout time is there the algorithm will automatically try to match them up with riders that goes in that direction that the drivers want to go to but a lot but the uber as a company has also received a lot of setbacks from consumers from people who say that the uber is infringing upon the rights of human of drivers on choosing which riders that they want to take which to a certain degree is true but to a certain degree if you try to let people make all those choices they can't they are unable to make the fully extend choices because they have limited time available they will lose out on certain opportunities that they would have had if the ais could have made some portion of choices for them. What would you like the world to know about AI? Huh, it's uh, one thing is that for for normal people out there, AI yeah, is a very vague concept. AI is a very vague concept and they either think it's so stupid or they think it's too smart. Uh, the actual level of AI is here and people are either thinking, oh my God, the Terminators will come upon us or <laughs> they are not even, they, they can't even identify my face or, or my fingerprint when I like, when I put my face in front of my Apple iPhone. So there is a big discrepancy between what people expect and what AI can actually provide. It's because humans process things in an intuitive pattern recognition level. So a lot of things that are easy for humans, the AI is having having a very big gap in trying to follow up. At the same time, the things that are hard for humans, the AI is finding very easy. So there's that discrepancy and in people's expectations and the reality of what AI can provide. And what I would prefer uh, society to know is that there are different aspects in tasks that you can expect from an AI. If you believe that AI can do things better than you can, then trust that the algorithms can provide you with better set of recommendations and go with it while at the same time recognizing that for other aspects of your life or for society or for policy, right? because I work in policy in terms of like how much energy that you're trying to use, in terms of what kind of transportation you're trying to take if you want to get from point A to point B. Um, for some tasks, the AI will be bad and you shouldn't trust AI to make the better choices for you. And for those things, you need to take responsibility and you need to actively work in government or work as a stakeholder in the society to make the world a better place. So um, trust AI when you can and not and don't when you cannot. And that's kind of takeaway yeah, that I would like to tell like, people. Yeah, so, so she should be worried that AI will destroy the world just like the Terminator? No, no, <laughs> no. That is, that is very not true. And, and so this is the thing, no matter how advanced AIs have become, until now, AIs have evolved with a goal. Um, uh, AIs can only be advanced 
when we either set a goal function or a cost function, very loosely speaking. And AIs, what they do is that they optimize for that goal. And none of the goals that we set them will be human destruction or domination over the world. It, 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 it could be, but it would be a byproduct. Um, the concept of good or evil as we think in human terms do not occur in AI terms. You can, you can even try to set up an algorithm that will try to bring about the worst of human lives and you won't be able to. Is, so, so a Terminator is a, is a fictional universe where people have somehow found a way to code evil into programs, which right now is impossible. And uh, thank you very much for your time. It's really powerful. It's really good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. I really enjoy your time. <laughs> Okay, that's really a good answer. Okay. Uh, yeah, we find a lot of things exciting. Let me think of that. Yeah. <laughs> where, where are you right now? I was just gonna answer any questions that you had, to be honest. Okay, um, yeah, different time zone. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>